Hey everybody, I'm Kenny. This is Sagerbrush Soul. I am putting you in the truck with me here in Swan Valley. I got tons of footage between Rigby and this point, and I don't know why I keep recording it because I rarely put more than a few seconds of it in. But we're headed to the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb. We'll pass through Victor, Idaho. We'll go up over Teton Pass. I'm not sure what we're going to cover in this video. Just take you behind the scenes a little bit again. Uh, we'll try to get as much race footage as possible. But show you the backside, that's what this channel's about. Announcer life, probably one of the most important things in my career that I've had the opportunity to do. I think this is the seventh year, but the sixth race, they did cancel the COVID race. And the first year I did it, I think they'd canceled the year before, but it's only been canceled four or five times ever due to lack of snow. Nobody saw it ever being canceled due to a pandemic. That was what happened in 2020. So uh, we got to have it last year with a little bit of a minimal uh, infield, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take you with me and show you what a normal one looks like. I think we're about over it. Hopefully, there's no cap on the spectators. We're actually gonna have an awards banquet this year, so you're gonna get a much better look of what the real World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb is gonna be. And the last one that I'll be announcing for the foreseeable future. So sit back and enjoy the ride. coming down Teton Pass looking down into the valley and I may have brought this up before but people are always asking well, why do they call it Jackson Hole it's because a hole is another name for a high mountain valley so you got the big hole in Montana there's several other hole type ones throughout Montana locations called holes that's why it's called Jackson Hole and now you know that So this is kind of interesting. I uh, I just got a call just as I was coming into town. Usually in years past, I bring the trailer up and it's gotta be up here before like seven o'clock in the morning. And it used to be a four hour drive for me from Logan, uh, Utah. And so I'd leave at like three o'clock in the morning to get the trailer here on time. The last two or three years, they've been very good to me because I live in Twin Falls and I would leave it somewhere uh, because that's closer to you know five six hours or something like that and so they've been very good to me and making sure and getting the trailer here for me and they did again but i wasn't at the last race it was colorado but i just got a call apparently not only is my trailer not in position but they don't know where it is so i went ahead and came to the 49er and got checked in uh, I'm gonna take my stuff up to the room Get settled for a second and give them a little bit of time to see where my trailer is. That's very interesting But I got to get it set up. It came from Colorado. I know it's probably a mess in there. So I'm gonna go get set up in the room take my luggage up take whatever else I might need up there We'll go see if we can find my trailer Their trailer not my trailer Rimshaw's trailer Thank you. I like the idea of being on the ground floor. Not so much about being right under the stairway. Yep, that went well. So I'm going to be here for <clears throat> five days now that I'm all checked in and everything. It's going to be my workstation. I'm going to do a lot of editing, try to get the Transworld video done that you guys have already seen. But again, the debacle with my trailer right now, I've got to go. Uh, I think I'm going to run downtown and grab a couple of other little things before heading up there. 
But really, I don't have to do a lot. And I keep calling it my trailer. It is not my trailer. But I don't have to do a ton on it because it's a different sound crew. We have concert sound that we do here. So I don't have to set up the sound system, but I do know, like I said, that I haven't seen the trailer since I got back from Colorado. I imagine that was a rough ride. I don't know if anybody's opened the door. I'm not concerned, but I know I'm gonna get up there and twiddle my thumbs for a while and the parking sucks. And uh, I, I said in the last video, I really used to love this town. This used to be my favorite place in the whole wide world. And uh, I hate what they've done to it. It's just traffic's terrible. Um, I gotta go down to Albertsons and that's gonna take forever. And uh, we used to could park close to Snow King, the mountain where the, the deal's gonna go. Uh, I know it sounds like I'm hating on this, but I am excited to do this. But this is just kind of some of the stuff that everybody's like, how come you get paid so much money to talk for 90 minutes or whatever? Well, I'm going to be announcing for a lot longer than that today. But there's a lot that goes in on the front side and the back side of it that you have to worry about that most people wouldn't do it for the money that I do. But we're going to get a positive attitude right now. We're going to run a couple of errands. Then we're going to go up the hill. We're going to take off the old glory boots, put on the snow boots and do what we came here to do. One of the problems with parking on this side of the building is, if you look up there, you can see a fair amount of snow. It all tends to land right here. So we're probably gonna back in and nose out as far as I dare to without some drunk snowmobile racing fan taking off the front of the truck. It's time for Travel Tips with Kenny. A travel segment that is only useful to him, but he insists on sharing it anyway. Today's travel tip is about Wyoming, specifically Jackson Hole, Wyoming. A lot of great bars here, but if you like to partake in libations, you know it's going to cost you a heck of a lot of money to be drinking in the bars. Everything is marked up here. It's a resort town. That's not even the inflation I'm talking about. Everything is more expensive in Jackson Hole. But you can save yourself a lot of money by having a couple in the motorhome or in the hotel room before you go out on the town. And I'm gonna tell you where the liquor store's at because Wyoming's very unique. You can't even sell beer in the gas station. But by the same token, it's one of the few states that actually has drive up liquor stores. So if you're passing through Jackson and you wanna get stocked up, come to Albertsons. You can get your groceries, you can get whatever you need, your mixers, things of that nature. In the same building is a liquor store and it's also a big wine rack. A lot of, a lot of good wines in there. But you're gonna find that if you stop in a gas station and think you're gonna grab a 12 pack of beer, you're not going to do it in Wyoming, with the exception of now, however the law is written, and I don't know the specifics of it, gas stations have been able to build separate divisions of their store into liquor stores, so they're both a gas station and a liquor store. Maverick gas stations, most of them in Wyoming have a little cordoned off area that is a liquor store, so you can get certain liquors and uh, they usually have a pretty good beer fridge. But again, Jackson Hole, Albertsons, save yourself some time. And if you know the back, instead of coming right down through the square, if you're in a motorhome, if you're in a bigger vehicle, parking lot may or may not accommodate it, but at least you can get down here, park on the street, send somebody to run in of where the liquor store is here in Jackson Hole. Save yourself some money, enjoy the great food and all that. But if you're like me, I could go broke pretty fast here buying drinks. And that's today's travel tip. All right, now we got supplies for hopefully the week. We're gonna go see if we can solve the announcer trailer mystery. We're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go the hard way just so I can show it to you. You're gonna go to the square and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna throw myself on the grenade for you and risk road rage. Biggest problem is going to be figuring out where we park because the development here has created a major issue with where we used to park. Again, this race is, gosh, knocking on the door of 50 years old. I can't remember exactly how old it is. Again, I think they've canceled it three, possibly four times, but I think it's only three. So um, they have developed everything, and then this year they put a gondola, or they might still be in the process of putting a gondola on the face of Snow King. So that's probably gonna change the whole layout 
of the track here. So it's gonna be a different view of it than we've ever seen before any of us, whether you saw it on my channel or whether you saw it on other people's channels on the hill climb. It's gonna be a completely different story and I'm hoping that they figured out where my trailer is. Because now I think it's all wrapped, so I might not even recognize the damn thing. You can see, I mean, you never saw cranes above Jackson Hole. It's just, I don't know, all for progress, but for the love of Mike, can't we just leave some things alone? It used to just be a lot of ranchers and people in station wagons going to Yellowstone, but now it is big money, big politics, more regulation, squeeze everything you can into every square inch of this town that I so used to love. Square is off to your left, but we're going right. Try not to run over hipsters. The funny thing is, is I've actually spent a ton of time in this town, knew it well, but not only the new construction, but they've changed the facade of so many of the old buildings that I get all turned around here and wind up in the wrong spot frequently. So expect that to happen a time or two. There it is. I bet it's been there the whole time, but I forgot they're putting a wrap on it. So, there you go. I think everything's where it belongs. So this is cool. They just put the brand new gondola that I was talking about in here at Snow King. And we got invited to take a ride. And I get to take you with me. It's an expensive ticket, but we get to go up and down for free. I'm scared of heights. I'm taking the timers, Tyler and Matt with me. And uh, this should be interesting. So come with me, let's go ride the brand new gondola at Snow King. Ready, Matt? You scared? Nope. Me either. Are you scared? No. Scared being on a thing with you. You guys are fly. Well, Vicky's been in Florida for a long time. <laughs> oh. oh, God. We're You've been out of Trans gondola. World. You've been on the Trans World, too. You gotta take your own gondola. <laughs> oh, all right. I didn't know it was They're gonna work us. out like that. Are you? Nope. Yeah, oh, sweet. I get to ride with celebrities? Well, with us. <laughs> 
So Brandon hooked us up with a ride here at Snow King. Said the old lift was 18 minutes. I rode that in 1992 with my girlfriend. Scared the hell out of me. Four minutes now. So this ought to be good. Here we go. How's that door shut? We leave the door. I don't think we shut it. I think it's automatic. We're gonna find out. That's <laughs> <laughs> a sensor right here. Oh, yep, sure enough. It's just like Star Trek in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It's like a roller coaster. I mean, I felt safe around a two person chair. This oh, thing falls off dear long God, long the turbo just, just kicked up. in. <laughs> you're screwed in this little just a big trial. No, yeah, you can't get out. Yeah, yeah, you're done. <laughs> That's cool. Hopefully they built it right. <laughs> <laughs> you seen that one video, that one just zinging people off? In like Sweden or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why would you bring that up now? <laughs> <laughs> it was insane. To the people were getting thrown like 30 feet. Holy cow. Yeah. So that's how steep these guys are. Like see the trees in relationship to the horizon line? That's what they're riding snowmobiles up. Well, over there now. On that side. We're making history this year, whether it's cool or not. Yep. That's the race lane. You can see the hurricane fence. Hurricane? Wait a minute. Call that snow We're fence. in Wyoming. Snow, snow fence. Snow fence. That's what I mean. <laughs> it seems like those moguls are bigger than normal. Yeah, way bigger Doesn't than normal. It? Like, is there more are. snow than normal? Mm, no. No? less snow. But they've been, it's been so they've cold, they've been making, been making it. Yeah. Oh. I think the moguls on the other side is bigger than these ones. That's yeah. right. You want to give your business a plug, Cody? See you in Backcountry Rentals and Adventures. Hit us up. You want to learn how to ride a snowmobile like the big boys do in the backcountry of McCall, Idaho? Get a hold of Cody. We'll take you to the jungle. <laughs> in McCall, Idaho. <laughs> All right. It normally ended. Ended right here, didn't it? I know, one more, right? There's a pink one. Oh, see, why would they do that? <laughs> oh, okay. It's not okay. Oh, oh, dear God. Okay, that ain't right. right. You would tumble so far down the mountain. <laughs> yeah. Why? So why do you have to say that? <laughs> uh, dang. Loading more kegs. <laughs> I keep oh. looking back. To... <laughs> Just gonna say I'm glad I stopped at the liquor store before I came up here. <laughs> Good Lord, folks, look at that. That's how steep what they're climbing here is. It looks so easy from the bottom. This is the new cat road they're talking about. Yeah. That never used to be there. No. Your um, qualifying? Qualifying, and ma no, qualifying stock and improved is gonna be um, to the first cat track. And when they find all the women, semi-pro, and the locals to this cat track. And then Thursday, I mean Saturday, everyone's oh. at the top. They're only going to this one. Yeah, the women, juniors, semi-pros are going to go this right there. Really? That's steep right there. Oh, <laughs> Is this where the rock garden starts? Yeah, right here. That's, okay. the, that's where Kyle pulls for... Yeah, like so. way in the air last year. Right here. It's so gnarly on the chairlift. We stand up. We stand up. Right there. Yeah, look at this shit. It's so different without the stage and the trees. Mm -hmm. We used to finish right here, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Across that way. Yeah, right in here somewhere. Got 
Are you guys walking it? Or are you gonna ride down? <laughs> so at the races, the the hill climbers, the competitors, the athletes, they go up. They'll they'll walk the course four or five times a day throughout the classes to see how the course is changing. And uh, I'm sitting there looking at that, going, I'm gonna need an ambulance if I walk down that thing. Tyler's over there setting a T post that'll hold. The lights that are the finish line. It's again this a little bit better view. Yeah, touch the. There we go. That is the city of Jackson Hole. That out there is the Elk Refuge. Grand Teton Mountains. Beyond that is Yellowstone National Park. Welcome to Wyoming. So if you remember the Skidoo trailer we were at, you can see it right down there. Crazy. There they go. Walking the course. They did not bring snow boots. <laughs> a little slippery. I will in a minute. <laughs> this is probably what's going to make my tummy feel funny. I might should have sat on the other side. I'm like, ah! <laughs> I should have been doing this in 4K. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, he's on the phone. So Chad, right behind me, with Hughes, he's testing the delay between. Oh, where is it? That speaker, speaker, between that speaker and the bank of speakers up there and you've heard his speech jamming. He's pre preventing that from happening to us and make a better experience overall. So because of the speed of sound, he's actually slowing the signal to those speakers to make them all match up here. Pretty cool technology. Just like Transworld, this is before everything gets set up. Kind of cool to see what goes into it. As a spectator, you get here, everything's set up, everything's polished, everything's beautiful. A lot of work goes into that. And uh, that's what all these folks are doing here right now. Super cool. So I would say, if you want to see more of what goes into the events you enjoy, subscribe right now to Sagebrush Soul. 
We'll take you behind the scenes of some of the coolest events anywhere. Hi. 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 Hi, I'm living the dream. Good, good, good. One more time. Are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're just trying to catch that. Are you nice or what? Yeah. <laughs> so we're cornholing. Oh, nice. For those of you sophisticated people, it's a game, not an event. <laughs> <laughs> What's the score? Five, two. These are the Myers is that you hear me talk about on the live feed all the time. I'm a big fan. That is the world famous Farron Gilbert right there. Second oldest racer in Rimshaw. Heart of a champion. You're gonna win one this year. I want to build one of those right there. Well, folks, this is where I'm going to wrap this video up. I had no idea I shot as much as I did. Next time, we'll go even deeper behind the scenes, check out some racing highlights, and some upside-down action with Octane Addictions. I'm Kenny. This is Sagebrush Soul, and may the best of your past be the worst of your future.